Hi, Mona. I don't know if you can hear me or not. I just, uh, just want to say hello and good morning to you. And good morning to you, Steph. Good morning. Um, and um, yeah, we're kind of Saturday mornings usually will start out a little slower than normal. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll wait another minute or two and then um, we're going to go ahead and, and kick this thing off. So, um, but you know, it's funny how, how, uh, you know, how this whole thing came about, you know, I'll just kind of share a little bit about um, filling some sp airspace for just another minute about why, why the uh, rehab or journal journey rather, why do we create that? You know, what, what, what was going on in my brain? And it's really about, you know, over the years, I've met so many different investors who are like, man, um, hey, I got you. We see you. We see you, Mona. You know, how, how, how many investors I meet all throughout the years that are like, man, I really, I know I shouldn't, I know I should do other things, but I want to go rehab. You know, they, they just have it in their blood. And, and so it's, it's uh, and I talked to some of the other later who, you know, made the investment and it didn't go so well. <laughs> And, but they're still in the business, you know, and some of them said, thank you. You know, they took, you know, our conversation and they went back and repositioned their business. But there's the people are going to do what people want to do with it. You know, that's what the world's all about. And that's the power of freedom and choice. So, you know, I figured, man, I'm not going to fight it. I mean, why can't I, what can I do for those that are set on doing that, becoming that flipper, becoming that rehabber. And from that, you know, we, uh, we've kind of created and, and Steph, thanks for putting all this stuff together and, and getting us out here on a Saturday morning to to, to do this. And and so we're, we're going to go ahead and officially start this thing off. And, and and for those of you that are here and you come in later, you know, this is series one of a, of a three week training uh, opportunity. And, and before I go any further, I will tell you that I am. I am in another location and yesterday we were rolling and everything was going good and, and the power, you know, the connection was lost. So if that happens today, stay with me. I'll come back. We're on Zoom. There was a different setup last time. I don't anticipate it, but don't worry. If it does, I'm going to come back. You know, we've got this time allocated and we're going to deliver as best we can. The second thing, you know, I'm at my daughter's house and, and she's got babies and, and a husband. And, you know, so, I mean, and I, I don't lock them out. You know, they, especially my grandson, Major, he's three, full of energy. Ah. So you may meet some people, folks, but that's the beauty of Zoom and, and everybody being in everybody's living room, right? You know, uh, I just do that stuff. So, and lastly, come in here, you know, um, drop where you are, uh, experience level, where you come from, and any questions that you might have. And, and about the questions, I, I'll, I'll tell you, don't be offended if you drop a question in there and I, and I don't get to it right away, that's to your benefit. All right, because the shiny syndrome is kind of where my world is, and, and I can get off on a tangent on the question, and then like, okay, where was I? <laughs> so I need your help on that, but we'll make sure we get the questions answered, and, and um, you know, because that's why we're here, to answer questions, and, and, and more importantly, anybody that knows me, and those of you that don't, you know, I always kind of start things off with the proper mindset, right? I mean, because let's, let's face it anything else you've ever done in your life you had to have a different mindset to achieve it if it was uncomfortable you didn't know what you were doing it took some courage you know you had the the dating game just think about that you know and all that stuff that goes around there right so i have a i have a little better life hack that i get from my coach and mentor and this one is really i mean i feel it's appropriate for this morning so i mean it, and it says don't compare it and and before i say let me give you a framework we always look at other investors that are doing better than we are. So we think, I know I did, you know, when I started this thing and some other people were doing like, man, they were doing multiple houses and I was slow getting started. And then it's all that stuff. So this, listen to this. Don't compare yourself to the success of others. Here's the hit, write it down, get ready. Winners focus on winning while losers focus on winners. And I don't, I'm just reading the writing, so don't get mad at me. I'm not calling you a loser. And I'm, I'm just saying I was in that space. Okay. But listen, keep your eyes on your goals and work towards achieving them. And that's what we're here this morning to do. Hone in on what it is we want to do. You know, change the, the, change the story, change the state, change the stories, change the strategies, right? 
So whatever's going on in your head today and this next whatever amount of time we're going to spend this morning, let's focus on changing that state of mind. And what I mean by that is, is that, you know, I got to be honest, you know, my wife and I stayed up a little late last night. Watch, we, had, we worked our tails off this week, right? So we said, oh, let's watch some TV. 1130, 12 o'clock. <laughs> I wake up this morning, I'm like, oh, 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 oh. I wasn't in the right state that you see now, but I worked on it. So let's work on the state. Let's work on the story then. I said, okay, I'm ready to, to show up today. You know, it's like you should be ready to show up and learn today, right? And then what's our strategies about? All right, what's our strategies about? You know, is it lack thinking or is it prosperity, achievement? And let's talk about success, baby. So this is what we're here for. So thank you for that commercial. Let me do that. I mean, it's the most important thing I know to share before we go anywhere, right? So let me just move forward now and let's talk about the framework of today. And we're going to have a little just quick discussion. I'm going to share some things to kind of trigger some thoughts and then review the session. We had three sessions this past this past week and we'll just hit the highlights of that and then we'll jump into what we're here to do today and that is is, is is the value of the scope of work and the repair estimate and i'm actually going to show you some things uh knock on wood <laughs> through this <laughs> you know uh again i face a challenge with this whole technology thing man but I'm, i'd rather be in it and working it than on the sidelines okay so uh so anyway so this just Jump in, all right? And, and one of the things I always ask is who's, or somebody asked me, or I ask, who's this for? Who's this session for? What's the training been about the subject matter? And, and you know, we talk about the rehabber's journey, but where is that rehab? Is it, have you had projects? I'm just, I have four of them written down. Those that have projects, not sure where to start, but they got the first deal. They're like, hmm, what do I do next? And that's a tough one. <laughs> right or or wanted to start not sure where to start right uh kind of the same but maybe more so starting on rehabbing and not sure where to start you know you know you don't have it. or find a deal there's some of us that don't know how to find a deal don't know anything about real estate and but we know we want to do rehabs so all the little fundamental steps in there so really it's a real raw newbie right I mean, just, man, I don't, I'm ready. I need some help and some guidance. If that's you, you're in the right place. And lastly, <laughs> I chuckle about this one because it's like, oh, I think I've been there before. Um, started and I'm not, wait, where is it? Started and I'm over my head, okay? In other words, you thought you had to figure, I thought I had to figure it out. And then I'm like, uh, well, uh, you know, mm, help. <laughs> right and, and, and that's how it was for me all right i mean i i started some projects we did some stuff and then we you know and, and we've been experienced man but i'm telling you there's dumb stuff you just don't see and this is coming from a guy that's been in and around the construction world for 20 years or longer actually since i was eight years old and still some stuff all right so that's okay you're in the right place so you got that? Figure out where you are. Put it in the chat. You know, if you come in later, drop it in where you are and let me know. And then and, and so move forward. Um, why me? And I have two pieces to that. You know, two, and I want you to write these down, all right? Before I talk about the other thing, why me? Because no matter what we talk about today, I, I always try and slip in what I believe are the foundations, the basic foundations that an investor needs. That you, you know, it's boring, it's not sexy, but man, it works. And and those two things, and, and this is a little different. I always tell people, you know, learn how to communicate in a new space with new people, right? This one thing is communication. It's about relationships, not transactions. And who do you communicate with, Jeff? New real estate, real estate agents, other investors. Learn how to talk to those distressed sellers, folks, because that's who we're after. Right. And, 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 you know, raising money and contractors, just communication, because all those people are critical to your success on the other side. Right. And here's the other part, whether you want to be rehab or not, here's the foundations you want to learn, man. Listen, write this down. One is you need to know, you need to learn how to be able to assess the value of a property. So you're paying for the right price and you're not paying too much. Okay. Pretty simple. Two, 
then you need to know, okay, this property is a crapper. It needs fixed. What's it going to cost to fix it? And who can help me do that? Whether I have experience or not. All right. And then number three is what's it going to be worth when I'm finished? And, and I'm going to take you back to remember me telling you about the communication and learn how to talk to agents who help you with all that information, learn how to talk to contractors who help you with that information, right? And learning and then other investors. So those three things, you get those down, four things, communication stands by itself and learning how to communicate because that, that's where your leads are going to come from, right? No you know, marketing. If you don't have that, you don't have any business. Hello, rehabbers that want to rehab. You got to have some kind of marketing campaign and learn how to communicate with those people around there. And then the other thing is when you got those three things nailed down, then your strategies. So that's another commercial. I had to slide that in, but I hope you heard me. Okay, the benefit of the foundation of the business. All right, so now as a, as a real estate investor, I'm kind of known as the king of rehabs. I say it all the time. I was given that name by other investors because of the properties that we've done. But, but more importantly, it, it, here's, here's the real hit. Here's the real hit as to why. Because I'm on a mission. We're on a mission to empower new real estate investors or house flippers since we're talking about rehabbers or rehab right with the mindset and the tools to start and build their business all right and and i only believe to deliver my information one way and it's it's clean it's, it's sometimes raw but it's real because what i learn is that's how i learn best don't tell me all the rosy stuff keep me from falling into the pits that cost me time and money you know, tell me what it was like when you lost six or seven hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> How did you survive a hit like that? Right? Tell me what it was like when you thought you had it going on. And things went completely different. That's what I want to know. And how did you survive? Give me the tools so I can adjust and make it work. You guys, with me? Everybody okay? Say yes, we're all right. Drop a drop a chat. Heck yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. All right, so. Let me check my notes and I'm looking at these notes so that I can continue on the, on the right course, right? So I think what I want to do now in, in addition before we, yeah, that messy middle, thanks, Deb, is, is show some, uh, if I have the calm here, I want to just share, uh, if you haven't seen some things already about, uh, uh, hang on guys. Hey, I got it. Ooh, I like technology. <laughs> I have such good trainers. And you guys just don't know the story behind technology to me. It's just a whole nother. If you're afraid of it, let me tell you, don't be, just mess it up until you get it figured out. That's all I can tell you. That's been my journey. Anyway, so now back to why I'm, I just want to show uh, some projects that we have done. I don't have, don't take the time to go into them. Um, but, you know, I, I, I hope this opens up. Um, here we go. Okay. All right. Uh, these are just some, some projects in this particular house. I won't go into a lot of time on, but we added a thousand square foot to this house and, and, uh, here's kind of how it was here and here's how it is finished. And this is more the front end to here and the inside, you know, just was a total rebuild on the inside there. This part of the, up in this first corner up here, I will say you know, that when we talk about nasty, we had to, if you can see my cursor, we had to lift the house up from here all the way around to the back. So the house, if you drove down the street, you would see it tilted up in the air like that because the foundation that we had to replace the foundation and the flooring and all of that stuff. And yes, it was in our contingency, thank goodness, because um, it was a significant cost. So anyway, that's, this is one. And then another one, this is more of the same. And, and, you know, we, we kind of standardize our finishes so that, you know, it's just, it's the same thing people are looking for in the marketplace. Here's another one, you know, and I, I want to just talk about, we also looked at, you know, we weren't, we weren't able to buy everything on the block, but we would buy stuff close by, right? So this house came, we, you know, we were doing a project up the street and I saw the sign went down and it happened to be one of my real estate partners that was listening and, you know, a short period of time, we got the house and a lot to build on for like 40 grand right 
And this was a really crap route on the inside. There was floors missing and the back of the roof was missing on the back. And, and here's kind of how it ended up. Um, and some of the pictures on the inside, uh, we like to kind of save the old, this was the original part of the house and then opened up some stuff here. And this is another man, this one here was a scary thing. You can see, he looks like that. You know, it should be bulldozed over, right? I mean, here's the front of the, we had to tear off all the porch here, and this is just a side angle, and here's, here's the finished part. So here's this beginning part, here's the finished part, of, and then, then the, the back piece here, we had to tear off most of the back end of the house, um, and, and here's kind of the finished part of the back end. So, and then again, well, you see similar similar stuff, you know, we, we market to what people want. And so anyway, I'll, you know, I'll move on from that. But, you know, that, so that's, but we not only have the physical ability to change the structure, but we also know the little nuances around the right steps and the processes. So, all right, um, let's see here. Let me see how I get out of here. So let me uh, stop sharing. Hey, ho, 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 ho. All right. Um, so let me see where we are. So now we got that. I do want to just take a minute and, and review because uh, I don't want to assume those of you who catch this replay later and, and uh, you were able to attend. But last week we had three things we talked about. The first one was contractors. <laughs> Everybody's got a story and, and, and you know, all that stuff. I hope you guys don't mind if I take a sip of something here. Um, thank you. Um, uh, there's all kinds of horror stories around contractors and, and we've had our own and we're not going to go into all of that, but I want to just talk about some highlights there. And it's about relationships again. What do we talk about at the beginning? Communication, building a relationship. It's a dating game, you know, <laughs> it's, and, and it's not a transaction. Don't see them as that, right? You want, they're a partner in this mission, you know, and we're, we're building a relationship with a guy down here in Texas and Houston because we've got a project underway in Galveston. There's going to be a beach home. Uh, travel house and anyway, anyway so just a couple of things and write these down please relationships not transactions excuse me and referral based contractors that's why it's important to kind of step out of your comfort zone and meet other investors that are actually doing the work and doing the work that you want not the ones that put a lipstick on a pig and don't care what the finished product is right those who really want to have a night well you saw what we did those are who you want to get the referrals from why referral? We know it. I mean, you know, chances are you're going to be in a better position. They're going to be more of what you want. So anyway, for referral, and then um, it's back to communication and preparation for these contractors and how you get prepared to talk to them. If you say, Jeff, I've never talked to a contractor in my life. I don't know anything about construction, or I know how I've had some bad experiences with contractors, but we go through, a, you know, help you get positioned so that you're in the best state. Because most people, when they don't know a lot of things, it's hard for them to, if they're in a conversation with somebody, this may not be you, but it was, I see a lot of it. If you're in a conversation with somebody, you want to feel like you can tell them what you know, even though you don't know a lot. You guys know what I mean? You know, you want to, you know, I, I, yeah, and, and rather than listen and be humble. And that's where we come from, helping you get the right posture and the right tools, you know, like tools that you, know, you need that a contractor is going to say, man, these people are professional. Like a contract, like a clearly defined scope of work, like a, you know, repair estimator, you know, like a pay schedule that I can tell you, here's where you're gonna get paid, and here's and oh, by the way, you're not gonna get paid for work you're not done. We don't give deposits. I'm not gonna give you 20% to start. I'm not gonna give you anything to start. That's not how we do it. Contractors are used to that, but let me tell you, there's three types: new construction, remodel. And rehab write them down new construction remodel and rehab and in the rehab world baby listen you want to work with me you demonstrate some work here's a percentage you demonstrate some more work here's a percentage the new construction other folks can negotiate different things and all that but that's not in our world and we teach you how to do that all right um because sometimes you don't have to fire that contractor or that contract is going to fire you like this house we bought in Galveston, I'm talking to you about. You know, the poor investor got spanked for forty five thousand. They probably got ten thousand dollars worth of work. I don't know if they got that one. That's real life stuff. Okay. So anyway, uh, enough of that. Uh, and then we moved on. Let me see if I'm uh, proper. Period. Oh yeah, day two was over over leveraging. 
and having contractor depth, right? I mean, we're talking about rehabs. We're talking about people that are going to do the work unless you're going to swing the hammer and nails, which I don't. Uh, you know, you need to have people that are, you know, three, two or three deep, depending on how many jobs you did. And we were doing six to eight jobs at, at a time. All right. That's a whole nother conversation. You know, let's start with one. And um, and so, you know, uh, we, we, we have that. So, and then over leverage. You know what over leverage means. You got more going on than you got money coming in. <laughs> Things go sideways. You get a little old crap, right? It happens and you have to figure it out. And those are some stories I share with you along the way. You don't be scared. You know, I mean, successful people fail all the time. And just, just a quick, you know, note I heard the other day about Walt Disney, you know, he fell in bankruptcy seven times and they stole, you know, they stole all some of his stuff and, and he creates Mickey Mouse, a freaking mouse that becomes the household love. And somebody was talking about, um, man, too bad he wasn't around to see his success. Talking to his daughter and his daughter said, no, no, you don't understand. This is exactly what he saw before he ever built it. Mm. Anyway, all right. Focus, Jim. Uh, <laughs> don't be over leveraged. And the contingency. Day three was a contingency, right? You better have it. And what's the amount? You know, new people, I always tell them 25%. Some will tell you 20, that's enough. I tell you 25% because your numbers, are, if you don't have any help figuring out the repair numbers, your numbers are going to be wrong, I guarantee you. Because mine still are, are, are off. And I know what I'm doing to an extent. It's just going to happen, right? You're just going to have wrong numbers and they're usually wrong on the side that impacts you. <laughs> all right, because we're, we're trying to save money and all that stuff. I and mean, we got a budget and we'll do this and mm, have it, 25%. Have someone help you with the numbers. Build a relationship with that contract going back to Monday, day one, so that they can walk through the house with you. A rehabber contractor that knows the nature of it, that's a referral, and you can build the cost into your job. So, you know, the first job, you may be off, but then you'll have some history of pricing. Mm. Anyway, so here we go. Okay, so far, I know I've been blah, blah, blah. You know, you guys chat me up, okay? Let me take a peek at the chat here and see what we got. If we got any questions here or messy meal, exactly. Yeah, hey, Mona, yep, okay, got it, got it. I want to keep moving then. Um, Close the chat. Okay, so um, with all this being said, that's why I'm here today to shorten the time frame and protect your money spent on completing your module. So now we're going to continue on, but that's the mission. All right, so we're going to get into why we're here today. Uh, holy smokes. Um, scope of work and uh, repair estimator. And I'll tell you, these two documents are, are so important and how you put them together and goes back to having you know someone in your corner that can help you do it. I mean, that's nice thing about technology. I help people from different countries just by doing FaceTime. <laughs> they walk through the house and, and give them some information. They can look at it. So technology is a beautiful thing. It shortens the world. But if you're local, you know, and doing some things, having opportunities to do, to join us on the mission through the projects that we do. So, uh, so let me get to uh, a couple of work here. Uh, Oh, I got to go back to share, I believe. Oh, I am here. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, man, I had a great teacher show me this stuff. So um, let's go over here to uh, the scope of work. Hey, Harado, good morning. Um, this is... Um, hey, Jeff. Just, hey, man, good morning. This document is, is really... Uh, it's, it's essential to um, creating... Uh, the best workflow, the best numbers, because we take all of this stuff uh, and, and before we even meet with contracts, we go through and create this document uh, so that it can help determine what the repair numbers are, what we're going to do, and then we use this tool to communicate with contractors. So uh, this, and, and write this down, this does a couple of things. It communicates with the contractor, our intentions, clearly, defines what needs to be done and more importantly it's a communication tool between you and the contractor and i'll give you an example of what i mean 
that is like, you know, like the, for example, I was interviewing contractors on this job down here and I, I knew in like two minutes if this person was the right person or not, right? <laughs> because a good contractor, I'm sorry, contractors that we like to work with are ones that aren't afraid to say, sir, I'm not sure if you saw this, but this is how this is, should be done. And right now it's not done correctly. Here's what it takes to finish it, right? Uh, hello? That's the, you know, I mean, and, and don't let your ego get in the way. You know, I mean, I, at first for me years ago, I was like, oh, I saw that. I may not have saw that, but I see, you know, <laughs> um, but you guys with me, they'll share some stuff. They'll tell you some things they see. And if you're smart and you're humble, you can be quiet and they'll actually, you know, teach you some things along the way, you know, <laughs> that's the other thing. So, you know, so this document, you know, and, you know, our, our mission statement is providing affordable housing with outstanding standards and finishes and code of ethics is built around the world, the word trust and this project here. But here's all, we always create a summary and, and you know, we'll go through the summary and it talks about all the things, where the house is, what we're thinking. And, and then but I want to start pointing out a couple of things. You know, we always inspect the mechanical systems. Those are the, the, the electrical and roofing and plumbing and HVAC because you never know. Sometimes those systems are good. And those are the systems that, you know, people have think they cost a lot of money. Not always. And then, and then here we go. Write this down. Uh, the scope of work and the follows is, is the actual flow. We create our scope of work to be the flow of the actual job. In other words, you know, the first thing you're going to see, which is demo, is the first thing you do. The last thing you're going to see on this thing is the last thing that should happen. All right, so many people get messed up on where to start with these demos or these rehabs, man. Um, Harada and I were in this house down in, in Houston and, and it had a big old the roof was missing. And, you know, it, it was, it was, the demo was incomplete and they were already doing mechanicals in the house, you know, and, and just, you know, hey, I don't know about you, but if I'm working, I don't want to work in a house, I'm going to get wet because there's no, they got holes in the roof. Right. And, and in the Midwest, it's snow. <laughs> I don't miss what the Midwest work. Uh, but anyway, so you, you use this tool. I mean, this thing has like you see the demo and all the things that go around with the demo. I mean, this is uh, these are things we, you know, if you're like, Jeff, I don't know how to put this together. We help you do that. But, you know, and then it's the outside, the inside of the demo. And then and then the next thing is, OK, we got it all clean. Now we got to build it and put it back together. That's what carpentry is, and it's rough carpentry, and 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 then all the things, and you know, and this one, this house has a garage, a, a carriage house on the back with an apartment in it. Oh, nice, nice, right? And and then the house. So here's the things you do with the garage. Here's the thing you do with the house, and and then you know, um, then you're ready. Once you get everything rebuilt and sturdy and strong and roof fixed, then you start the mechanicals, and you see. We, why do you think we have HVAC in there? Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, First, why do you think we're starting with HVAC first after we get everything done? Uh, I know it's a trick question, but uh, what do you think? If you don't know, put I don't know in the chat, you know? Um, anybody want to take a stab at it? I think I'll just pick on Gerardo. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah what it, it would be because uh, that HV, if you have to run, air, uh, ho, um, you know, um, run new lines for for the uh, uh hv through the house or whatever you want to do all that first before you start putting up the drywall or anything else i would think well but what about the other mechanic before you do plumbing you're on track before you do plumbing and electrical though because those are the three mechanical features why do you think i have hvac first um I would <clears throat> Yeah, I would just think because of, of check the unit and if the unit has to be done, you know, or redone, all that stuff can get done because it's going to have to be run. I think this this house, it would probably maybe even uh, um, need like maybe even more vents, you know, mm -hmm. into a certain area or whatever. So, well, yeah, that, that's good stuff, too. But really, it's our, this business is so simple, guys. Listen, HVAC, you know, it usually has big trunks that run through the house, right? Right. You know, and then the furnace and all that. So it takes up the most space when you're doing it before you cover it up. Yeah. So, and, and it's rigid, so you can't change it. 
right? Mm -hmm. and, and then so the HVAC comes in first and they do all, because they're going to take all the space available <laughs> that you can without making it look really goofy or awful when it's drywalled in your house. You ever been in a house and you walk by a wall or something and, you, and it's got like a little bump out just in a weird space? <laughs> you know, or, or you look up at the ceiling and you're wondering, well, why is that there? You know, those are generally put there to cover up HVAC work or plumbing work that wasn't properly designed to run first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it should be put up in the house so you never really see where it all goes. And you, you know, so we, I will talk more about how that looks and why is that. And plumbing's kind of the same way. Plumbing pipes are hard and rigid, right? You know, electrical is last because you it's wire. Right. You know, mm -hmm. Really important right in there because you know you those guys, man, if they come in have your HVAC guy come in there, he's going or a woman, they're not gonna be happy. Okay, this is not so anyway, uh, but you have that and then pre-drywall, insulation. These are all the steps that happen. You get the house all ready, you get it insulated, inspected, drywall, put the wood and doors up, paint tile, flooring, and the finishes. And those sequences are pretty standard on anything. Watertight from the outside down, right? But this tool is, 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 you know, and then we also have house rules that we provide, you know, making sure everybody's on the same page. Um, but I, and the summary, I, I didn't read it, but we, we communicate with the contractor in a way that says, hey, look, we're on the same team here. We build, build a relationship, you bring value, blah, 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 right? So this document is really important and putting it together is critical. I mean, when I was done with the contractor that we selected, he said, man, thank you for taking the time to do that. You know, I, mean, I, I, I can see that you've taken the time to look at what you want and you know what you want and check this out. He said, you know what you want, but guess what? If someone helped you put this together and you really didn't know what you want, does it matter? <laughs> huh? It's a tool, man. And we're going back at the beginning, empowering you with the tools. This is one of them, right? So, so anyway, about to wrap it up here. Uh, I want to just go. Everybody cool with that? So let me let me close this one up, and and then you know, um, let's see here. Let me get rid of that thing, and then I think it was the repair estimator that uh, is created, right? from the scope of work when you walk in the house you're doing all this thing man. the order can you know i don't know which order is best but and that that gets down that takes everything from the identified from your scope of work to numbers so you put numbers against we have to replace the roof over there so it's you know it's 7500 bucks is that going to cost 7500 bucks to do that roof no but you know i have uh, some contingency built into my pricing also <laughs> That's another trick I teach you. You know, hey, you want to make sure you're a little high. We this also anticipates the continued price increase on material. That's the other thing going on, right? <laughs> Man. Mm. So we're just going through here, and, and this is everything that so when you have a painting guy out in the house and he's got the scope, he or she has the scope of work, they know what you want, their numbers should come in you know, uh, under 5,500, <laughs> right? If, if, and, and I don't show them numbers. They should go out and take your scope of work and calculate what it's going to cost them to do the work. Cool. You know, some will, can you tell me what the budget is? You know, when you're new, I would encourage you to, to not do that um, until you learn how to have a conversation around that. Um, because say your number is two thousand dollars higher than he was going or she was going to charge you. <laughs> that's why. That's why you don't do that. So, so if you did that to every contractor and you were high on everything, right, or, or lower, and they would they yeah you were high, and so they're like, oh, you want to pay five thousand? I was going to charge you three thousand. <laughs> oh, so you're paying it right, or your HVAC? Oh, you want to you know you you had uh, seven thousand? I was going to charge you five. So that's how much money is that over your budget already? Five thousand dollars or something. Got it, man. So anyhow, this this document goes together, and you know it highlights everything that you're going to do on the job, and it, and it ends up being a number down here at the bottom um, that has. And, and if you want this document, you know we can probably get it to you. 
but you can see where we have a contingency and our, our contingency is only nine, you know, nine percent. Why is that? Because I got the other five or six percent built into the price. So we're still, you know, at 15 percent. I say 25 because you haven't done them before. But we cover ourselves, trust me, on the numbers after doing 100 plus of these. So we know kind of where we are. Fair. Our goal is to get you to that point. Okay. So um, I know I kind of rushed through this part a little bit. So let's let's open it up. Let's circle back around. Let me stop sharing here. And uh, Mona, I appreciate you you being here in Toronto. So Mona, are you able to communicate at all um, through your mic? Oh, I see you want to build and have a vacant lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, well, let's let's uh, if you drop your information in the chat, Mona. You know, love to talk to you about the vacant lot and where you want to build. Um, you know, we've have experience in the new construction space, and um, certainly uh, love to chat with you more. So, um, if you don't mind that, unless we have your contact already, that'd be great. Um, Steph, so you have any, any thoughts on today? Um, no, you brought up some, some good points going through the course of the rehab and making sure that you, you know, don't lose your shirt, you know, dealing with the contractors, make sure you've got a, a, a good contractor that's going to point out things you may not even have noticed on your project that could have caused your problems later um, and building contingency in, into your to your um, pricing so that you've got a little cushion because there's always something unexpected that could happen on a project. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Yeah, and yeah, Mona, I'll put my email in, in there so you, you can get that. Um, so um, um, let's see. Gerardo, you there? Yes, sir. Any thoughts, man? And um, yeah, yeah, no, it was it was that scope of work, like you said, it's detailed from the beginning to the end. So that is just an incredible tool to have. I mean, to set up and just do it like that because uh, you cover everything and then you get the contingencies and having that percentage because right now we don't know how much the, the woods, you know, the lumber is going to be, you know what I mean? And it may jump from one day to the next. So having a yeah. good cushion is real easy to, I I mean, in my, in my opinion, it's just real easy to, to be able to, um, have other investors look at this and say, okay, man, it makes sense. You know what I mean? It's, it's real easy. It makes real sense. Everything's laid out. So, so no, I think it's, it's a great deal. It's a great tool. And, and I'd seen it before, but uh, I've only seen it on paper um, from the learning tools that we had, you know, this is an actual, you know, uh, uh, true rehab, a real rehab that, that's been happening, you know, as we speak. So I think it's great, you know, so I think it adds a lot of value and, and that's what I've learned through, through the, through all the system of failed fortune builders and, you know, all the other, you know, um, information that's out there. And it's just, you know, if you have this, it just makes it everything so simple, laid out for the contractors, the contractors come in and, and there's no guesswork, you know, so I think it's a great tool. Takes out the guesswork. Uh, and, it, and it brings up some things that you may or may not have seen, like all the things you guys are talking about. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and the other thing I'll tell you too is, is that to all this stuff, and here, here's, here's, here's another nugget, write it down. You want to create, this is part of a, a private lending package that you put together. Mm -hmm. okay. In other words, oh man, I'm new and, and I can't get any money and blah, blah, blah. And, and I tell you, listen, let me show you how you can put together a presentation okay a presentation that has the current market analysis which reflects why you why the house should be bought at this price and that it's a great deal right mm -hmm. i mean your real estate agents help you put that together and, and then you have you know your numbers you have your budget numbers in there and then you have a scope of work in there that if i'm the lender you're telling me a story on how you're going to get this job done 
You tell me what it's worth now so that, you know, you're buying it right. And now you're showing me that you have been, you're conscientious enough to get this stuff on paper that you can use this tool. And then you're showing me, you know, the contracts that you're going to use for the contractor and then your pay schedule. Are you guys listening to me? I mean, yeah. this is powerful. This smashes. Yeah. I don't have the experience. I don't have the money. Right. Yeah. That's the other thing. Right. I mean, and, and so yeah. anyway, I can talk forever about that. And I know we're already, 14 minutes past the one hour or so. Um, yeah. Now but that, that uh, it makes a lot. And then also, like you said, you know, with that scope of work, you have little, uh, you know, uh, accomplishments where you pay and then you, you take care of the contractor. So you don't get into a buying with a contractor of, Oh, and how are you going to pay and all this? There's little, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, goals all the way down and it explains it, you know, in T. So that way there's no question, you know, when something comes up and they finish it, they get paid yep. bottom line yeah yeah and you can take that information like you just said put it on what we call a pay schedule and these are the yeah. things that's our goal our target yeah so it's just communication and listen yeah. that 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 smashes the experience level too you know how to use those documents you don't have to have experience to know how to use the documents right to your benefit right well, I mean, we just have to have a good community around <laughs> We have to have a good, a good community, community, around community, yeah. community around us. So yeah. that way we get to something that yeah. we don't know or we haven't done. Hey, let's communicate. Let's get the network involved and let's take this down together, you know, as, as a team, you know, yeah. so we can, that's it. We got to squat up and, and, and show up and get it done and just get these, yeah. these done because that way we don't lose them and they stay local. That's right. That's right. Thank you for that. Ronald. So, just kind of in wrapping it up, uh, folks, has, has this been helpful? You drop a thought in the chat for you today, this morning. And I always like to ask, is there something else I could have said or added to this to help you along your journey? So if you think about it later and don't have any thoughts now, please do that. I know you're going to probably watch this later for those of you that do that. So mm -hmm. I want to kind of just recap, you know, what's coming up for you. You know, we're going to have another, we've got three weeks planned to kind of speak around all of the rehab process and, and getting you the tools, the mindset and the tools to step into your space. So stay, look, stay tuned for that. I think we have to have a session every day next week at noon. For those of you that are here and they'll get you later at 12 o'clock. So and if, and if you're not, part of our Facebook group, Transcending Real Estate Investors. Make sure you join that. It's the link is in the chat now. And that's an opportunity where we come together, like Carrado was saying, it's a community where we're showing up in there and offering a lot of this stuff on a regular basis. And, and then uh, you can join that group to be around some other folks. We've got folks all over from all over the country in that group. And, and um, if you're hearing this and, and you're like, man, I, I got it, Jeff. I've been following you and I'm, I'm ready, you know, for, for more of you at a higher level, you know, my calendar link is in there, hit that and, you know, we'll, we'll have a constant consult call around that. Okay. And, and lastly, uh, well, I forgot something, you know, take a look at our YouTube channel conversations with Jeff, you know, because I think that kind of speaks in a broader space. I know it does. So subscribe to that and share that with your friends, you know, because I know we may not have folks, that are interested in real estate, but we may know some people that are are, are stuck in corporate America and they're like, man, I, I got to get out of here, <laughs> but they don't know how, right? You know, I mean, I'm an old corporate guy, 20 years in corporate America and finally took the leap to get out and do my own business over 22 years ago. So, and family and community. So that's a powerful place. Go check that out, subscribe to that. And lastly, this weekend, uh, some of our coaches are doing a real success. It's free. It's in the chat, you know, Les Brown, you know, Eric Thomas might be there, you know, some folks that are really speaking from a financial perspective that you may not know of now, but they're doing some powerful things across the country and it's free across the world. So check it out, man. Success, real success uh, may even be in the chat there. Um, and if you don't get it, it's, it's today. It started yesterday, today and tomorrow. Uh, and Les Brown is in there. We all know who Les is and stuff. So, uh, 
thank you everybody for for being here you know i hope the the time was of value to you and um mona you know we'll, we'll connect and Adrado, um let's are you around after this because i know i didn't get to you yesterday man i kind of didn't get done until late um are you able to take a call and like as soon as we get off of here i can't hear anything okay, okay. you hear now can you hear me okay. now yeah okay I was, I was, are, are you able are you available right after this where we can do a little quick follow-up call because i didn't get to you yes yeah let's okay. let's do that okay okay all right well um if there's nothing else uh i appreciate again everybody uh being here and for those of you that copy it later you know make sure you pop on the links and, and all this stuff and remember, remember what I started with. Don't compare yourself to the success of others. Winners focus on winning while losers focus on winners. Keep your eyes on your goals and work towards them each and every day, right? So put your schedule together from Thursday to, to next Friday and Saturday. Again, we'll come back together. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I hope you had some value in this, you know. Uh, and let's go out and rock. Have a great day. All right, you Thank too. You. Thanks. Right. Bye. 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 Bye.